In 2015, I communicated with Reichert about their sanitary face shields and how they didn't really stay in place, and the problem seemed to be that the face shields themselves had be, been made too thin over the years. They originally were about a millimeter thick, oh, um, around 19... 90, they were still making them fairly thick, and then in the ensuing uh, next uh, couple decades, they were making them too thin to work. So I just thought I would order another set of facials to see if they made any progress. So they come in sets of three. Now when I take and look at these, they feel much thicker. And um, as I take uh, three of these and squeeze them together and measure them, I find they're actually more than a millimeter thick each. And now they seem to um, fairly well hold in position. The face shield um, problem has been resolved as of the start of 2019, and it looks like it's um, fair game to replace all the too thin face shields that have been made over the last couple decades. So slightly over three millimeters thick when squeezing three of these together. Compared to uh, past versions, uh, now very sturdy. This is all about face shields for the Reichert Phoropter. Starting, um, I believe, about um, 18 years ago, the design of the face shields seemed to have changed uh, so that they no longer fit as well. Now, going back um, 20 to 30 years ago, uh, face shields were um, very similar looking but performed much differently. And uh, basically, they would stay in place while doing an eye exam on patients and uh, sit securely in place on the phoropter. As an example, taking one of the face shields, I believe this one is around um, 30 years old. And once in place on the phoropter, uh, the patient's face would sit here, and it would pretty well stay in place for the course of the eye exam. And it made a very secure fit. Nothing super tight, but it, um, it, it really stayed in place throughout the course of eye exams. So then, um, what seemed like it was about uh, 15 to 18 years ago, uh, face shields no longer worked as consistently. Once put in place, they um, look okay, but they no longer fit around the edges. There's a large gap around the front of the face shield. But uh, the more important issue is when the patient's face was up against the phoropter, um, there would be more shifting of the face shield and it would more easily shift out of place or actually dislodge. About um, two months ago, I bought some new face shields, which seemed different. They seemed uh, sturdier. And um, I thought, oh, well, finally we've got a breakthrough here. But as I started testing them on various phoropters, um, I ended up being disappointed. And they were, um, they fit a little closer to the edge, but as far as staying in place when a patient um, 
would be looking through the fropter and moving around. They, they just really didn't stay in place like they like they did um, two to three decades ago when they were manufactured. So we're still left with um, poorly functioning face shields is what you can buy from from Reichert or through various uh, suppliers. In my attempts to analyze what was uh, going on between the old face shields and the new face shields, what I came up with is comparing the shapes, comparing the curves, and they, they seem basically identical looking face shields from one manufacturing time to another and I really couldn't demonstrate that the uh, the shape was different in any of the details uh, from one year group to another but what seems to be different is the rigidity of the frame the new ones being far less sturdy than the old ones um, you know, downright weak and flimsy is what it comes down to. So then what I took to doing was not being able to analyze the polymers so much. I thought, well, let's check the physical dimensions of the ones that work and compare it to the ones that don't. This is a, a caliber, caliper with a millimeter scale on it. And so what I did was I'd measure it in four different zones of the face shield and see how thick these pieces of plastic are and then see how thick it is at the rim here where it clips onto the uh, metal clip of the phoropter. And so what I found is that the the ones that work are nearly one millimeter thick at each of these zones And the ones that don't work are more like a half a millimeter thick at each of these zones. And oddly enough, the, um, the thickest part is actually the, uh, the last section. And this is nearly a millimeter thick at the last part, part here. However, the weakness is at each of these sections here. So when it's clipped here, it's weak, 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 and then strong here. Well, but at this point, it's, it's no longer able to hold against the fropter body because there's no physical, little physical strength in the uh, face shield along the way. Now, I don't have a real accurate, accurate um, micrometer here to measure the thickness. This is um, sort of a crude caliper. So I thought what I'd do instead is take um, three face shields, hold them edge to edge together, and measure how thick it is for three thicknesses of a face shield at the first section. You can see three thicknesses here is maybe one and a half millimeters. The next bend, three thicknesses, one and a half millimeters. The next section, three thicknesses, about one and a half millimeters. In the last section, three th thicknesses is about um, two millimeters. The newest face shields are, are similar to that. Measuring the final section, it's
it's nearly three, three millimeters thick on the very last section whereas the parts in the middle is, is, is still about a millimeter and a half which means each portion here is um, a half millimeter thick now I have so few remaining old face shields that I really can't take uh, I've borrowed these two from a, from a clinic um, so all I can do is two thicknesses here so two thicknesses of uh, face shields that still work the uh, first curve two thicknesses is nearly two millimeters So um, if, if I had to assess how thick each section is here, it'd be probably about 0.8 millimeters thick. So nearly a millimeter thick ends up being a good and functional face shield. Now in the past 18 years of um, face shields being made, there's a certain amount of variability each time we get another packet of these. Um, here's another group so three thicknesses of this measures just over one millimeter at the first bend and about a millimeter and a half at the next bend just over one millimeter at the next bend and then at the final section this measures three millimeters for three thicknesses And so when you try bending these sections, you find this is actually pretty rigid. And this is just flimsy, flimsy, flimsy all along the less than 0.5 millimeters thick for the rest of the, the face shield. So if all of the face shield were like this end piece, I think we'd have a pretty good functioning face shield because it would be similar to the way they were made 20 to 30 years ago. But this is all they have and all you can buy is the latest version which is again about a 0.5 millimeter thick for most dimensions of the, of the face shield. In a sort of a futile attempt to um, modify some of the non-functional face shields I tried increasing the angle of this first bend of some of the face shields and what I did was uh, I basically bent it with a small vice grips pliers heated it with a hair dryer and then cooled it off in cold water then dried it off um, and that made this bend more obvious here and it caused a little bit of extra force to hold the face shield against the foropter body however all that effort is pretty much lost with the very flimsy nature of the of, of the face shield the, the, the other thing I tried was um, using um, double stick tape by applying it along this last section of the face shield and then applying, first of all cleaning off thoroughly with alcohol and then applying um, the double stick tape all along this length usually in two sections one starting here ending at the bend starting there ending at the bend and then applying it to a similar area on the foropter body 
I then pressed the uh, face shield into place against the fropter body and held it there for like a half a minute and then did the same thing for the other side and what I found was that the face shield seemed to hold in place pretty well. However, when I came back to the same clinic a year later to retrieve the fropter for annual servicing, what I found is every fropter that I tried this modification of the face shield had separated from the fropter body. Maybe not completely, but it, it was not stuck on there like it was when I first put it there. So even with all these attempts, I haven't been able to get a, a face shield to function like they were when face shields were made 20 to 30 years ago. Basically the, the secret ingredient is a millimeter thick of plastic approximately and that gives it physical strength, rigidity, and it holds its shape up against the fropter body and stays in place when the patient's face is up against the face shield. However, if you need to purchase a face shields, um, you can only buy what they have. Um, interesting factor, uh, face shields are made with in the normal way, and they're also made with a lens pre-glued into the opening. Now what I found with a lens pre-glued into the opening is the lens fogs up very quickly and you don't even get through one refraction without the lens fogging up unless you really push the patient way, way far away from the phoropter. So the patients usually are so close up against this that the eyelashes are rubbing against the lens and so with a regular phoropter it's inset a couple millimeters and uh, it keeps the first lens from getting dirty and then it's several millimeters more before the first three doctor sphere lens and several millimeters after that before the quarter doctor sphere lens wheels in place. So um, with a lens glued into the face shield it becomes completely worthless and so whenever I go to a facility that has the glued in lenses with their new phoropter I basically pop out the lens. Sometimes I have to soften it by chemicals, sometimes scrape away on the edge with a, an optician screwdriver to remove the excess glue but I can usually recover the face shield by popping out the lens but still it doesn't have a sufficient shape to hold in place for actual refracting because of the flimsy nature of the way face shields have been made for the last 18 or more years.